Hello, everyone, and welcome back once again to Gary's Mod. As we get closer to the fall season, I'm kind of starting to try and play more maps that get to what I think is such a big part of Creepy and Comfy, but which I haven't really explored up until this point. It was only after some discussions on the Discord and after playing that TF2 Halloween map that I realized that this is a whole avenue I really haven't explored, and I should. And that's that classic, sort of creepy and cute Halloween aesthetic. I'm not just talking about scary or horror-themed, I'm talking about actually Halloween-themed. I'm talking about orange lights and jack-o'-lanterns, of black cats and all that stuff. And looking at this, I've gone in with very little information, but it seems like this is some kind of, like, roadside haunted attraction. Now, this is not really what I expected from this map, but I have to say, it's definitely something I can work with. Because when I was a kid, I used to go on the site called hauntworld.com, and on it, you could actually view pictures and schedules and all that stuff, four haunted attractions all over the country, and this reminds me a lot of some of the ones that I would see down south. And of course, with something like this, you're either in for a fun haunted hayride or Captain Spaulding's House of Horrors. And uh, call me crazy, but those webs are moss hanging from the sign. If you look at the piece hanging down the middle, it almost looks like uh, the twisted face of like a bat or something all rotted beyond all recognition in the sides of the wings as it hangs down. You can see it, right? You can see the eyes and the nose and the mouth all twisted. Well, I can't wait to attend shows Spooks and Shooks. I guess it doesn't really rhyme when you say it out loud. Uh, but first, let's check out admissions. I don't think I'm supposed to be here. And, uh... That's a real weird sound coming through the radio. Uh, maybe there's a little more to this yet. Because despite being a haunted attraction, it looks to be genuinely abandoned, even if the lights are on. Then again, this is intended to be a zombie survival map. I wonder what it would be like in that event. I imagine something like Left 4 Dead 2's Dark Carnival. I love that low-quality, evil laugh as we walk through the door. Oh, look at these leaves falling from the trees. The jack-o'-lantern atop a scarecrow, lanterns hanging from the beams. It's like a whole fall festival. I love it. If this were a real haunted attraction, this would be one of those things that moves when you look away to have your picture taken. This is the Pumpkin King. Hello. Okay, so it looks like there's a couple of different directions we can go. We can either enter into the maze, head right to whatever that is, or left into the caves. And it looks like there's a building of some kind beyond the maze. Okay, first things first. Do these open? Ah, they do! And! It's actually quite a detailed interior. Uh, lid doesn't open though, so... I guess this is more of a trap for pushing over unwitting guests. Uh, now those both have pretty clearly defined paths. But I can't see anything over here, yet a light guides me. Like a moth. So I should probably check this corner before I forget about it, right? That's always what happens with me. I say I'm going to look at that later, and then I don't. And we're instantly rewarded. This looks like maybe some kind of back lot or, like, staff area. Yeah, this is definitely reminding me of the haunted hayrides and attractions and stuff that all the farms around me do every year. Pumpkins and bats with glowing eyes painted on the walls. It's cheesy, but that's the point. Because these celebrations, they're not just about Halloween, and they're not just about spooks. 
they're about fall and the feeling of fall. Uh, it looks like uh, this place has a wine cellar. Not really a cellar. Oh, but they got Doritos. Uh, any cool ranch? No? Uh, what about Blazin? Diablo? Yeah, I'll take that. I recently discovered I love spicy Pringles. Am I getting off topic? Ah, yeah, we got Cool Ranch too, sweet. Alright, that's coming with me. Uh, oh wow. Its power was so great that it was actually causing the table to glow. Ah, somebody had a party here. I can just imagine a whole dance occurring in this hall. Everyone all in costume. Festive decorations all over the place. You know, this is actually sort of reminding me of when I was, like, really, really small. Uh, we used to do this thing at my preschool where we would all... They would dress up all the kids... All the teachers would be dressed up, and we'd go room to room, and they would actually take us trick-or-treating within the school. That was such a fun time, and it looked a lot like this. Uh, well, I say that, uh, we didn't have a giant bonfire to some elder god. And then again, tis the season, and if we can actually get one to show up, uh, if anything, it'll just make people think they got their money's worth. Actually, something like this, clearly meant for spectators and yet devoid of them, kind of makes me wonder if the pumpkin god didn't show up, take offense at the imposter at the front gate, maybe brought them an adventure to show them what Halloween really is. Sorry, I'm writing my children's movie script now. Oh, look. Very conspicuously, these did not start moving until I stepped inside. I love it when decorations that are hung from the ceiling are hung not above head level, but just at head level. So that they actually present obstacles that you have to move around as you go through. Things that actually impede your path. These are things that I'm sure would piss a lot of people off very, very much, but I think they're cool. Sorry, I could have just used the flashlight right away, but where's the fun in that? Just a little hideaway under the stairs. Once again, keeping in mind that this is a zombie survival map, first and foremost. In fact, I've heard there's even custom voice work on this map if you play in the zombie game mode, but I wasn't sure how well that would work in VR or for the exploring format. <gasps> Clipped stairs! That actually surprises me a little less, because I've heard that clip stairs are actually really, really important for multiplayer. Man, this is like having the whole place to myself. Oh, how cool would that be to walk into a haunted attraction, all the lights on, no one there, no chance of getting caught, and you can just walk around all on your own. Yeah, here's where the staff all had their pizza party slash summoning circle. Although, given the graffiti we saw in the other room, uh, perhaps the knights just lost their round table. Hmm. A conspicuously uneaten full pizza. I better test it to make sure that it's not poisoned. Actually, wait, I have an idea. I have to at least try this. Oh, come on. You can't really throw in VR. And we can jump down right here. With all these broken windows, you can really see the verticality in how this map is intended to be played. Zombies climbing up on objects to get inside the windows? Oh, this isn't a maze. This is, just, this is just an entrance. Okay, save some time. I'm glad I didn't save that for, like, a finale. But there is a side entrance here that I did not notice before. Does this just go around the side? Yeah, no. 
grave. Xerxes? Who's Xerxes? Maybe somebody who worked on the map? Actually, unlike the one upstairs, that looks like a fully eaten pizza box. I mean, the, the pizza is fully eaten, not the box. The box is only half eaten. But it sort of makes me think that maybe, you know, along with the bench, somebody just sits here and, you know, has a pizza with their lost friend. Although with a name like Xerxes, it could very well be part of the whatever summoning ritual happened here and whisked all the guests away. Actually, this is kind of giving me an, I an idea. It's a long shot, but I'm going to try it. Here you go, Xerxes. Hopefully I'll be spared in whatever new order you create. There you go. Anyway, let's hang a right and see what's over in this cave. Oh, mine from the look of it. But yeah, everything about this, the lights, the corny decorations, the bales of straw and jack-o'-lanterns, I think a big part of it is not just the feeling of fall, but also kind of that childhood nostalgia of what Halloween used to mean. Rowex and Scott. Along with matching coffins, it looks like they never got as far as putting either of them in the ground, and... Well, one of them decided they got tired of waiting. Can we go through here? Probably not, right? No, that's the edge of the map. I've got to assume these are all map creators, or at least contributors, right? Anytime I see a big bonfire like this, I can't help but think of Nicolas Cage in the middle of it. It's just an associated image at this point. Yeah, all of this does a really good job of giving the impression of something that's a farm year-round, but does something for Halloween, which so many of them do. So many of them have pumpkin picking and haunted hay rides, and all the cheesy decorations you can look at, and it's so much fun the whole time. Hello, is this some kind of haunted tour? There was even a place in my town that uh, was basically a glorified... Nope, another pizza party. There was a place in my town that was basically a glorified flower store, and even they had a haunted house. Hello, why is this door bricked up? That's the kind of thing that almost makes me expect a couple of corpses to bust out of those coffins on my way back. Like I fell right into the trap. I think this is the back of the map already, so... I wonder what's in here. Hmm. This doesn't look... very safe for the guests. Huh. Now this is more like... A classic image of a haunted house. This is actually blurring the line between actual haunted house and attraction haunted house. You've got the dilapidated, stained, and graffitied building. Who knows if those cobwebs are real, but the lights are not on, but strung up, and there's Halloween decorations hanging about. Oddly enough, the only kind of decorations I've encountered in a real abandonment are Christmas decorations, believe it or not. Wow. <laughs> Those are some party-sized drinks, to be sure. This is actually kind of spooky. It almost makes me wonder if... In true 80s movie fashion, the people who split away from the party didn't awaken something real. Here, I'll throw this in the wishing well. Oh wait, no, we haven't been back here. Oh, there's a couple of different ways to go. Oh, there's so much more to this. 
Well, I think down here is just the path under where we found that pizza, yes, yeah, so that path is out. In reality, there's just that way and that way. And that jack-o'-lantern looks like it knows something we don't. You know, there's a weird threshold where things sort of become corny over time with exposure. Uh, and that has like sort of an ironic effect where it goes back to being creepy again. The more expressionless and basic the jack-o'-lantern, uh, oddly enough, the more unnerving it kind of becomes. Can't stand it. Can't stand all those coffins leaning against walls. I always feel like one of them is going to be the one that springs open. But it's just another dead end. Which, you know, imagining playing this in zombie survival, there's a whole lot of places for you to trap yourself. I guess the idea is that you're meant to hole up and make a final stand, but still. This feels like a path to some kind of graveyard. I don't suppose we'll be able to get out, no. You know what, though? Why would there even be a sign there if you weren't supposed to go there? And everything I'm seeing beyond actually looks pretty detailed. Why would you put lights over there that are going to eat up map resources if... <laughs> you see that? I was looking at that thinking, why is there a second moon? Nope. <laughs> Alright, let's try no clipping through. I mean, if we're going to be doing this anyway, why not, why not look around? Oh no, this is all fully detailed. I wonder if this is the kind of thing that only opens after certain stages in zombie survival. I'm going to have to rethink my whole way of going about this, because there's so much more to see, I bet. Wow. Yeah, I'm willing to bet these are all contributors. Maybe people who helped test or provided assets? Oh, we're getting multiple facets of the Halloween aesthetic. One moment we're walking through a fall festival, haunted hayrides and mazes, and the next we're wandering through a graveyard in the tall grass, listening to the cause of crows overhead. Oh, and there's more to the graveyard. And even more in that direction. Man, I would have called this so prematurely if I hadn't no clipped through the gate. What is this? Some weird meteor from out of space crash land? Is that what happened here? Ah, oh, there's so many different possibilities for what could have wiped out all of the guests of this party. Although, I suppose it could be multiple things. Is that where whatever came out of this thing went? Is there something down that way? I don't like how the music just picked up as I walked down towards this dark corner. That crumbling steeple in the background. And yet there's nothing here. Uh, seeing the aftermath of something, but not having the satisfaction of finding out what it was. Oh, wait, I may have spoken too soon because something else is clearly going on here. For 
some reason levitating. What is all this? Am I playing Stalker? Is this an anomaly? <laughs> Imagine the one guy who was inside the entire time just comes out and falls and slides down into the pit. This is so nuts. Is there maybe supposed to be like some kind of story to this map? Uh, I almost wish I had played, or at least tried to play in zombie survival mode so that I could hear all the custom dialogue that's allegedly here. <laughs> Another portrait. We saw that on a wall inside, didn't we? Can we maybe, uh... Can we maybe exhume this body? He looks like he'd be holding some pretty good loot. No such luck, but... We can take a peek inside with no clip. Nope, nothing. <laughs> Too good to be true. So this gate was always a lie. I thought it looked too detailed beyond it to be the real edge of the map. But then how do you open it? Maybe... Maybe different things open at different stages? Let's get inside this church. I'm real curious to know what's in there. And maybe from the tower we can get a better view. I know what happened here. The guests of this party fell victim to every single 80s movie trope. Playing around in haunted houses doing antiquated rituals to summon a demon they don't believe in, and, for good measure, toss in a meteor from the sky. And all the while, they're gathering in places to do dances in places that aren't concert venues. Thus providing a target-rich environment for the final act of the film. Aw, oh, guys, you had it coming. Oh. Nothing more to be done about this. They've all been teleported to whatever higher plane of torment. So, I guess that means nobody will say no when we try to climb the tower, right? Oops. Okay, third try climbing the ladder. Oh, we can see the whole map from up here. Well, sort of. It's kind of lost in the fog. But I love how bright that night sky is. Certainly doing no small part to that incredibly close moon to the point where you would think there would be some weird gravitational effects. But I love being able to see that pale blue reflection off of the clouds moving by. The stars in the sky. Being able to see the silhouette of wooded mountains. Uh, of course, this place seems to be casting a glow all its own. Oh, that, that, that object in the background looks so cool. It's like you have this church that looks intimidating enough on its own, uh, but then in the distance, whatever that thing is just dwarfs it. And come to think of it, this all looked to me like sort of like a southern like haunted hayride type of deal. So what kind of architecture even is that to be in the middle of the woods down here? It's almost like whatever ritual they were doing summoned that thing from some alternate plane. What is that? You know, let's get a better look at whatever that is. Oh, look, it's a whole rotting, falling apart windmill. Look how it slowly turns from side to side even changing direction. That thing is not an operation, I tell you that. That one flew away as I approached. And hello. Wait, now that I look at it, there's very clearly a brighter spot right in the center of the moon, right there. I can't look up all the way because I kind of messed up my neck yesterday. But look, 
<laughs> I kind of wonder if maybe that piece isn't what's over there. <laughs> the arm of that tree branch almost looks like it's pointing me. Go that way. Oh, we can actually get here. I thought it would be like a skybox asset. And... I, I've looked down from a lot of high places in VR. Uh, this is the first time it's actually made my stomach drop a little bit. I think it's something about being able to see the water moving through the fog below. The jagged rocks sticking up. This definitely feels like the climax of a movie where we have no other choice. More moon rocks. Maybe in the context of playing the map on its intended game mode, it's meant to imply that these are the cause of whatever zombie panic is occurring? A zombie panic source, if you will. Yeah, it's when we get close that we hear these strange sounds. Yeah, meteors crashed into Earth, spraying blue goop all over the place and causing the forestry to levitate. All those classic images associated with fall. Is this a door? No. Let's go through around the side of this building here. Oh, it looks like this building was actually hit by pieces of the meteor. Oh, the whole side of the building is torn right open. I don't know what the inspiration for this aspect of the map was, but I have to say I like it. Actually, you know what? Now that I look at this, I, I do know what this reminds me of. This is like some kind of XCOM map or something. I could totally see this functioning as one. In fact, the fog even sort of makes it look like the 2012 XCOM. Pieces of scattered all over the place, and apparently crystallized an entire horse. I don't know whether to say poor horsey or lucky horsey. It kind of depends on however they perceive the experience, I guess. Oh, look at that. You can actually see across to the other side of the lake. The external assets to this map are so impressive. It actually feels like a part of a much larger environment and yet so isolated. They've chosen not to have any lights in the distance, so it really is like we're in the middle of nowhere. Who's leaving tribute watermelons? And for the Gestapo, no less. I think this might be my favorite part of the map so far. At least as far as fall comfort goes. Just imagine you're out with your friends, you've had a fun day in the fields picking pumpkins, and at the end you just come under the overhang, sit by the lantern light, eating and drinking, and looking out at the fog. Able to smell the woodpile right over there. Okay, if, if anything I'm learning from these videos lately, it's that fall needs to come faster, and I need to get me some friends before then. I think that's the first time fingers in VR have done precisely what I wanted them to do, and I wasn't even trying. That was a little bit of a creepy moment. What are you looking at? <laughs> Doesn't it almost look like it's like frowning in concern? I gotta see what's up in this windmill. Once again, sorry, I can't really look up all the way. 
Now, before we do that, what's in there? I just enjoy navigating by lantern light so much. I find it so atmospheric. But I, I sort of doubly creep myself out because, on the one hand, I can only see what's around me. And if I don't hold the lantern low, and to an extent even if I do, I kind of blind myself because my eyes adjust to the light of the lantern, thus making the darkness around me even darker. Uh, on the flip side, why are some stairs clipped but some not? Um, but on the flip side, it also makes me aware of how visible I am from a distance. And on the one hand, it's creepy because I know that I can be luring things in the dark right to me. But also, it's because I, I get a certain level of fear from knowing that I am a creepy thing. Sometimes when I explore abandoned places, I'll hear people come in, I'll pick a corner to hide in, and I'll just think about how like spooky it would be if somebody spotted me in that moment. Whoa, performance is tanking over here. And wow, it's like the levitational properties of these things are actually almost preserving certain sections of a wall where they were. Look, we can see like the inner mechanism and everything. Although coming up here is definitely a last stand for any defenders from the zombies. Uh, can we platform it? Uh, yes, we can- Oh! I mean, that might have just been lag, but... No, I think we actually do get some levitational abilities from this. It's like gravity is lowered in the presence of these things. That is so cool. It actually affects the physics. Okay, well, this map just got about ten times more fascinating. I'm gonna have to revisit every area that has these things. Do I, do I go for it? Do I go for it? You know I go for it. You know that even if I can't make it, I'm going to do it uh, in no clip. But I'm going to try. Oh, I actually made it. No wonder this thing can't turn around all the way. Now this is an epic location for a last stand. Imagine this, zombies trying to float over in low gravity, trying to land on this beam. Now, the LOD is certainly doing weird things, but look. And what a climax, because by this point, you've climbed this tower, you're overlooking everything you've been to up, up until this point. Two, through, use them interchangeably, who cares. And can we get over to the other one? That might be pushing it. That might be a little bit too difficult. Yep. And we just fall. Yeah. The anti-grab properties didn't save me from that. And you know what? They won't save me from this either. Because you know we have to try this at least once. Yep. What are you laughing at? Yeah, so that was GM... Or, sorry, not GM. ZS. Gleam. And that was so cool. I'm really glad I no-clipped through that fence, because otherwise I wouldn't have seen the half of it. Literally, I only would have seen half the map, and the less cool part of the map. And that's saying something, because this whole thing, it is so neat. I feel like this map is kind of divided into two distinct halves that represent two distinct parts of the fall season and Halloween. Right here, we've got the fall vibes, the jack-o'-lanterns and orange leaves. Not to mention all the cheesy, cute, yet, in a weird way, sort of creepy again, decorations. And in the other half, we have more, like, dark Halloween. Overgrown graveyards and crumbling church towers with a little bit of strange thing from outer space. Maybe a little bit of Lovecraft in there as well. Or H.G. Wells, depending on how you look at it. It's a lot of fun, and I only wish I could have heard some of the dialogue that apparently comes when you play in zombie mode itself. 
I mean, you know me, I always love looking around and thinking about how it would be played as intended. But I think even exploring, I was able to get a good amount out of this. And if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this map out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.